Imagine an AI assistant you build consistently delivers the exact information you need every single time. Sounds like a dream, right? But what if I tell you the key to unlocking that level of precision is not giving more data to your model or it's prompt engineering, but it's a smarter way to connect your data to your AI agent. Today, I'm going to show you a game-changing technique that changes the accuracy of your rack system named hybrid rack. As you can see in the system design, we have two different rack system here. One is the graph rack, which we are going to use Neoforger here, and one is the pinecone to store the vectors for the similarity search. The goal here is to retrieve related informations for each chunk that we already retrieved through the vector search in the pinecone using Neo4j, combine these information and return them to our agent. This definitely happened to many of you that you have a huge amount of text and you cannot extract all the relationships and information and add them to the graph rag. But you know some part of that context is important and you know a part of the relationship that should be created to give a more accurate response. So what you can do is to create a graph rack based on those parts of information that you know is important and it's a critical information should be inside your agent response and you embed the rest of the information and store them in the vector database. In this way, whenever agent search and retrieve the chunks using a specific ID or name or a property that you define, you find the related nodes to your chunks and you retrieve all the information together and return them to your agent. In this way, your agent never miss anything. But remember, the accuracy of hybrid rag relies on the information that you store in your knowledge graph. If those information are accurate, then whatever that agent is returning would be satisfying and reliable. Now that you know how to build hybrid drag, let's dive into the coding and build a simple project using Pinecone and Neo4j. I already set up everything, all the environment variables and the configuration that I need, along with the data that I'm going to use. This is the data that I already used in my previous video named GraphRag, and I create an entire knowledge graph and show you how to create a knowledge graph step by step. In this video, I'm not going to dive into how to create the node or add relationships to your nodes because I already covered them in my previous video. The scope of this video is mainly show you how to create a pine cone vector store and connect it to your new 4J knowledge graph and retrieve the information together. First of all, I'm going to create two new folder here named ingest and retrieve inside our ingest folder we have two different files one for the new 4j ingestion and one for pine cone i write this pine cone ingest because i don't want to make conflict with the library of the pine cone because it has the same name ingest And inside our retrieve, we have Neo 4J Pinecone. Inside our Neo 4J ingestion, we have this function named create nodes that I covered this in my previous video. So what's happening here is just creating all the nodes based on the data that we are passing to the function as a dictionary and also the node label and node name are being fetched from the data that we have here. The next thing is the code for pinecone ingestion. Let's go step by step through it and see what's happening here. First of all, we define all the configuration file from the pinecone. I will put the link in the description so you will understand that how to create your own index it's pretty easy and straightforward if you follow the pinecone documentation next it's our function this function has three inputs it's the file names that you're going to pass the name of the file to the function and loop through them and chunk size and overlap 
which are the key metrics for chunking and inserting the data into the vector store. For chunking, I'm using recursive character text splitter from Langchain and all the chunk size and overlap being passed to this function. Then we have our log system to show how many chunks inserted into the vector store, looping through the files. And here we have a vector in order to keep the embedded vectors into the session and then ingest all of them together. We are looping for each section inside our file to get the information and then split the text using our text splitter, embedding them using OpenAI, and then passing the vector ID and other stuff into the vector, and finally, upsert them into the pinecone. Just one important thing you should pay attention to here is this metadata, property, value, whatever you want to call it, that I'm passing to my vector, and that is the name of the file. Napoleon underline info, Talleyrand underline info, and Battle of Waterloo underline info. Why is this important? Because this has the same value that I'm going to pass to my new 4J knowledge graph. And when I retrieve this chunk, I use this value and match it with all those nodes in my knowledge graph and retrieve them together with all the properties, values, and relationship and match them together and return them to my agent. This metadata is the reason that you can combine your vector store with your knowledge graph and build your hybrid rack. Now let's create the final function, which is for retrieving information. So, same as before, we define the configuration here. And then the input of our function is the new 4J query, is the query text, the, the text that we are going to search, the input of the user actually, and the top K chunks that we are retrieving from our pinecone. The first step is to embedding the user query. So whatever user is entering, it should be turned to the vector. Then we use that vector to do the vector similarity search and return the top K from the pinecone. And this happens using index.query function. Up until now, we have the result from the pinecone. Inside the result, we should search for the metadata that we already ingested here. So it's the score that this is not something that I entered, it's something that by default Pinecone will return to you. But metadata is something that I put inside the Pinecone. And then from metadata, I'm fetching the name that I put it here. And then as a final result, I'm returning the nodes that has matched value as the name and all the chunks that is inside the point cone. Something that you should notice is that I didn't pass the cipher query here because that cipher query can be anything and I'm going to pass it when I want to retrieve the information. So maybe I just want to retrieve the nodes, but you want to retrieve the nodes and all the children of that node are related together. This all depends on you and the scope of your project. Now let's see how it works. So I have all my imports and the graph, and then we should add our nodes, create the node based on the files. So here I'm passing all the file names along with the create nodes that we created here and we run this code to create all the nodes for our knowledge graph. Just pay attention that here is just a node, not the relationship. Next step is to create all the relationships for the nodes that we just inserted. And here is the relationships. And we use our upsert, process and upsert file function in order to pass all the files and chunk them and embed them and ingest them to the pinecone.
This take a bit of time. As you see, three minutes passed and all the files are chunked, embedded and inserted to the pinecone. Now we have our new 4J. Now we have our chunks in the pinecone. It's time to retrieve everything together. But before that, I'm going to show you how my knowledge graph looks like because I'm not inserting lots of information in it. I just want to show you how to retrieve related nodes from your knowledge graph based on the chunks that you found inside your vector store. This is the knowledge graph I created. You see, this is the value that is connecting my knowledge graph to the pinecone. And these are the nodes and relationships. I'm not passing any values to my nodes because the point is just show you how to retrieve nodes along with the chunks together. This is the cipher query that I'm going to use to retrieve all the nodes along with the relationships of that node. And this is a function to retrieve the chunks and nodes together. Let's run this. Query search is not defined. Okay, the problem is that I need to run this cell before this one. Okay, there you go. So I, my question was, who killed Napoleon? And this is the text that retrieved from Pinecone. And these are the new 4G nodes that are being retrieved based on what is the name of that chunk. And this is happening for all the chunks. You see how many nodes are being retrieved? Every relationship, every property, everything that is there, that it's based on the property of the name that we define to match together. And that's how you can create a hybrid rack. Simple, but really a game changer. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that it was useful for you. Please don't forget like and subscribe and share it with your friends if you think that they need it too. And see you in the next video.